So yesterday I didn't feel too well. Throughout the day I started feeling better by the afternoon and then by night I was I was better. I still had a sore throat, but I, it wasn't because I was sick. It was, I think I just smoked too many cigarettes the night before, um, just being worried about everything that's going on. When I have anxiety, I tend to smoke a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> what do you think I was going to say? Um, and Al Prophet and Sinister came and pretty much kidnapped me. They're like, come on, we're going to collab, get on in. Went to Al's studio in downtown LA and it was surreal to see what Los Angeles looked like um, that vacant. There's nobody there. Very, very, very surreal. And I tried to live stream. We had some signed posters and so we were just going to give away. It wasn't a raffle type thing, but uh, my, my phone just kept um, dying. But Al and I talked about um, the future and doing some work together. He's going to do some videos on my channel. I'm going to do some on his and um, I owe the world to him, you know, he, 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 Seth Ferrante, filmmaker, writer, um, he's also the godfather of my son, Nico, Seth introduced me to Al a long, long time ago, and that video got like almost 400,000 views on the, on one of those, um, I think collectively, I don't know what it was, 700, 800 altogether, so I got a lot of exposure, and I was able to start my own channel, and I'm really appreciative of that. Um, speaking of which, I wake up today and people are like sending me messages. Hey, uh, hey, is Al mad at K-Frog? Is K-Frog mad at Al? I was like, I don't know. I don't even know who K-Frog is. So I, I looked him up and I, I watched some videos on his channel. Uh, he had some cool stuff on there. I watched, um, I don't know, some video of, of a prison in Florida, I think. And, uh, somebody had like a machete. Now, I did time in Florida um, after the whole Mike Virgin thing. I haven't gone into that. I've been saving that for its own series. But I did time out there. And uh, it was crazy because they did make shanks out of lawnmower blades. These big machete Jason style shanks. I never seen anything like it. These Haitians and the Puerto Ricans would make it. It was pretty crazy. But uh, I I don't know if Al's mad at K-Frog or if K-Frog's mad at Al. I know that I have Al's back, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm loyal to a fault. And he pretty much started my whole YouTube gig, so I have his back on it. Um, I have a respect for everybody that's started YouTube channels, especially guys that have been to prison. Um, it's very respectable and commendable. Um, you know, I generally don't watch other channels too much. Um, I don't know why. I just don't. Uh, I'm either making my own content or spending time with my family. I have very little time for anything else. And sometimes other stuff that I'm doing, you know, with the film and some book stuff. Um, but generally, I just don't have time to watch anything. But I did go down that rabbit hole hole, that ho the rabbit hole. I went down the rabbit hole recently. And I was looking at all the other prison channels. What a weird, weird world, you know. Uh, first, I saw Wes Watson. He's got a huge channel right now. I was amazed at how many people hate on the guy. I don't know Wes Watson. Um, you know, and he's probably not um, the kind of guy that would like like me, you know? Uh, we'd probably be hanging out and I'd be like, damn, look at that fool. Hot, huh? Bomb. And he'd just be like, hey, I don't play like that. You always find guys like that in prison. What can you say to someone like that? He's all huge and scary. And I'm just a little bitch. So, I don't know why people hate on the guy, though. It's like, oh, that guy's whack. Wes Watson, oh, he's whack. Why is Wes Watson whack? Well, he, he's successful, and because he's, he's, look how swole he is. Successful and muscular. Like, what's wrong with that? Oh. And then, and then, on top of that, you see... You see other people putting Wes Watson's name in their titles just to try to siphon some of his success. It's sleazy. You know? I, I'm super grateful for all the people that I have that watch my stuff. Thank you, guys. Um, and as far as, like, the prison channel beefs, you guys, I know what you're thinking. You guys notice Leone? He gets about 7,500 subscribers. Now he wears a chain. Every episode... Never takes it off. He sold out. My mom gave me this chain for Christmas. It's Gonzo pendant. See? 
Very cool. Only a few people have that in the world. It's a real one. You, know, you can get imitation ones. It's a real one. And um, so prison channel beefs. We're not rappers. and But I do have Al's back. So where does that leave me? Um, I don't know. But I think that Al's joking. And I think that uh, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I haven't even texted him. Be like, hey, Al, what's up with that? Who is that guy? I didn't know who he was before that. And that's not saying that he, he's a nobody or whatever. I just don't watch prison channels. I was watching Wes Watson. And, like, he's, like, going on one of his, like, Stop. I was like, and I just was, like, mesmerized. I started doing push-ups. I was, like, doing one-handed push-ups. I was like, yeah. I was like, fucking, it was crazy. Like, oh, I see why people like this guy. It's kind of inspired. Um... So, where where was I going on with this? Uh, I don't know, but uh, let's get into the story. So, it where are we? Oh, Lompoc Special Housing Unit. I have gone to the hole for really no, honestly, no reason at all. They didn't find the computer cord, which I which is I don't know how they didn't find that because it was it was on the my top bunk under the mattress so easy to find I, they wanted me to tell on where the heroin was coming because at that time in Lompoc everybody was doing spice and everybody was doing suboxone now you can specially test specialized tests for both of those for buprenorphine and for whatever the synthetic cannabinoid is that k2 and spice is um, they have tests for both of them I've seen people in the federal halfway house get tested specifically for those substances, but they're more expensive. Um, on my how to beat drug test videos, people are like, they test for, um, you know, uh, fake pee, synthetic pee, and they test, no, well, not on like a six, on like a, on a basic six panel. When it's a lab test, yes, but uh, when I was on federal probation, it was a panel test that they sent to a lab, but that lab, all they did was stick a dipstick in it. And if you were dirty, then they send it for, for further analysis. But if you're clean, um, they don't. So it's it's pretty easy to beat that. So the fact that they had drug tested me, because it comes up immediately if you're dirty or not. Um, and so, like I said, some prisons will lock you up right there and then. Some will send you to the hole, or they'll send it to the lab, and then they'll send you the hole when, whenever the results come back. Lompoc's protocol was to lock you up after they sent it away to the lab, but they hadn't seen an opiate come up on a test for a long time. Now, of course, because I'm a convict, I have these paranoid thoughts that maybe Terry set me up. I don't know that. I mean... You know, uh, you'll see once you go to the disciplinary uh, the disciplinary hearing, they give you paperwork, and sometimes it'll say a confidential informant was used to bust you, so you know somebody told on you. Or sometimes it'll just say it's a random test or whatever the case. But I've seen paperwork where it says that a CI was used. It doesn't say the name. It'll just say a confidential informant. Um, I didn't really know what was going on, um, but I guess I gave them an attitude and because of that, they locked me up under investigation, which didn't make me look good. What did make me look good is that they had housed me with this Sorreño and he had, you know, when he had first come into my cell, uh, when we were both handcuffed and I watched the end of the last video and I'm, I am surprised no one's like, well, wait a second. You never mentioned that you guys were uncuffed. Of course we were. I mean, when I'm telling the story, it's like a trivial detail like that doesn't matter. It was a mistake on my part. But what had happened is when they put Killer into my cell, we were both handcuffed because you have to back up. You have to put your hands through the door. They cuff you. They, they handcuff you. You walk out. So you're standing in the middle of the cell. And then he comes in because he's already handcuffed, getting escorted from down the corridor. They usually leave you cuff like that for about 15 seconds, let you guys say a few things, because if they're gonna, if, if there's an issue, we're going to start talking shit to each other right there and then. It's like some weird human ant farm experiment or something. Like, well, uh, Bob, how do we know if the white guy and the, and the, the cell sider, how do we know if they get along? 
well, I don't know. Let's just throw them in the cell cuffed and see if they talk shit to each other. Uh, okay. And people get headbutt all the time that way. Um, people spit on each other's face. It's weird stuff happens when you're cuffed. But what had happened is, he, he, hey, Doc, um, are you active? I said, yeah, I'm active. So uh, the cop's like, you guys cool? And he's like, yeah. And then they hang, and then they uncuffed us, and then we went uh, along. I just wanted to clear that up. Some people are like, well, you never mentioned that minor detail. It must be a bullshit story. So that's how you guys can be. Some people, not, not generalizing, but some of you are like that. It's truth. Um, and then he's asking me if we have to get off. Like, um, hey, dog, um, since we're different races, do we got to fucking get down? Now, remember, I was just at MDC LA before that, and Southside's reading with black people, and black people reading with Pecker Woods, and yeah, so it's not surprising that politics get misconstrued. They get perverted, uh, lost in translation, so to speak. So I'm like, I don't know, but we can fight if you want to, you know, whatever. You know, at this point, it's like, I'm so depressed. It's like, I don't even care. You know, I really get the fuck it's when I get like that. Um, but whatever. I'm going to fight. Any, well, you know, when he's the first like, yeah, what's up, dog? I'm killer. I'm killer from wherever he was. I was like, oh, man. You know, with a handle like that, he's probably killed somebody. But then once I saw how kind of green he was, I was like, oh, he's a child. It's one of those ironic names, you know. Probably his uncle gave it to him because he's a pussy, you know? So, I'm like, well, maybe you should just check down the hall with the big homie. Or your other homies that are down here. There was no big homies in, this, in the hole at Lompoc. <coughs> so, he starts yelling at Spanish. And sorry, we're 12 minutes in and it was basically just a recap of last story. But um, he checks with the other Southsiders down the hall. They're, they're talking in Spanish. I don't know what they're saying. All I know is he's asking them if we need a fight or not, which, I mean, think about, seriously think about that for a second. Think about how awkward that would be. I'm just like, I mean, it's not like you can go, like, sit on your bunk and read a book. Just be like, oh, huh. oh, hey, excuse me, killer. Um, Did you ever find out what the resolution was? Um, Do we have to box? Oh, all right. Put the book down and start fighting? Hell no. I'm standing there just anticipating that we are going to have to fight. And who knows? I mean, I just talk shit to Kong. Who knows what could happen right now? They might say, hey, that guy burned Kong, or he checked him, he disrespect. Who knew? Who knows what was going to go on? So, after all that buildup, he's, he's like, hey, dog, um, no, we don't need a fight. We're cool. But still, I'm not at ease. You know, I mean, what if they said in Spanish, strangle him in the middle of the night? Possible. Man, I should have learned Spanish. I shouldn't have cut all my Spanish classes in high school. But, you know, so there's this, le there's this, there's this, I don't know, there's this certain level of unease, it, you know, or there's this dynamic of unease in the cell. So I try to start making, you know, small talk with him. I'm like, hey, uh, killer, why are you... Why you in the the hole? He's like, oh dog, it's uh, it's actually my first time in the box, fool. Um, I've never done any any shoot time, but um, I'm in the hole right now because um, I was stealing pizzas in the kitchen, fool. I'm like, what? What do you mean? You don't go to the hole for that? What the fuck? What do you mean? He's like, well, um, because we we're going on lockdown, uh, you know, we had all these extra pizzas, you know, because they were gonna give up back lunches. So I just decided to steal a bunch. Like pounds of it and shit. And I was going to bring it back to the unit. And I was going to sell it when we were off lockdown. And my boss, he caught me. Because, you know, he's on I guess he's on like the PM kitchen crew or AM ki kitchen crew or whatever. And a lot of times those guys will steal food. It's a hustle. You bring it back to the unit. And, you know, so when we have pizza in the feds, it's usually with spaghetti. They give you like a little square of it. It's about, I don't know, that big. And... You can sell those pieces for four stamps. So people that work in the kitchen are always doing these big, big, big like heists with as much food as they can get. Food is is a good one. Like chicken always goes for a lot of money. Um, but 
sugar as well because they have like big bags of sugar. Those big bags of sugar are worth like $10 because people can use it to make wine or uh, moonshine. You know, you need the sugar to ferment the fruit. So sugar is always worth a lot. So anyway, if you're a kitchen worker, you make a lot of money. So he's telling me how, you know, usually like he'd been caught stealing at the kitchen before. But he was telling me that the amount of pizza that he was stealing was significant. And I'm like, damn, I've never heard of someone go into the hole for something like that, which made me even more paranoid because I'm like, I don't know. This story doesn't sound right. Now, you know, we, we keep talking. He's getting less and less like the South Sider facade that, you know, hey, dog. you know, like with this short, hey, I'm killer. What's up, fool? He's getting much less like that. He's starting to talk like a normal person. He's like, yeah, I'm married and, you know, I'm from Orange County. Um, I actually met my wife while I was incarcerated. We met on a dating website uh, for specifically for prisoners. He didn't really talk like that, but you know what I mean? He got a little less South Sider-ish. And he really had married his pen pal. I was like, really i was like what what you met her on right and like you started talking to her on the phone and then she started visiting you and then you married her he's like nah fool um we actually married over the phone i'm like the what and he was explaining to me how you can get married to anyone they can officiate it over the phone never heard of that before but apparently that it's some service that caters specifically to, you know, to people that are in jail or prison. If you want to marry your, uh, your Haina, your bomb ass Haina. And, uh, so, you know, I'm starting to feel a little less scared. Concerned, I guess, is probably the best way to say it. Because it's pretty common if they want to hit you. Like, at the USPs. If you run up a debt and then you go check in, you're like, you owe like $3,000 for heroin. You go up to the cop, you're like, hey, I got to go. A lot of times they'll have somebody check in specifically to whack you, you know, because they won't house check-ins with regular people. At this point, they house me with him and he's telling me that he's active. I'm active at this point. So it's like, I didn't know if maybe they had him get in trouble on purpose and they knew my status because a lot of times you can go talk to, you know, a lieutenant and a lieutenant will give you that information. You go, hey, um, did Leone check in? He'll be like, nah, man, he's under an investigation, meaning I'm still good. So I, you know, and then, they make it seem like it's all good like this. And then I go to sleep. And like I said, no joke, you get strangled. So I didn't know what to think of it. But the more that I got to spend time with him, we started doing burpees together, uh, you know, working out, doing ab exercise, even though we weighed like 240 pounds, not of muscle. He's like, hey, hey fool, uh, do you think crunches would help? I'm like, I don't know, man. Probably not. Uh, we started working out together and... We spent, I don't know, maybe like two days together. Now, you know, time goes by very slowly when you're in the hole, especially if you don't have books. And at Lompoc, at that particular hole, you could have a radio. Yeah, you, at all holes, you can have a radio before um, you actually go see the disciplinary hearing person. So... I didn't have my radio yet, but, um, you know, I'd already like put a little slip in like, trying to talk to the, uh, property guy, trying to ask for if I could have my radio and they give you books at Lompoc. You can get two books off a book cart every Sunday. If I remember correctly, I've been to so many holes, so many different places. Um, but we didn't have any books. And we didn't have anything. Now, typically, people down the hall, like he had some Southsiders down the hall. And on the way in, I had seen Hillbilly. Hillbilly was all beat, you know, his face was all destroyed. 
And that's what had put us on lockdown from the get-go. I had no idea what was up with him, um, but I really wanted to talk to him. And I'd seen him when they were, you know, walking me to the cell when I had first gone back to the hole. That's it. And he kind of just nodded, you know, an acknowledgement at me. Um, So I think around the second day that I was in the hole, I saw a orderly which, I, you know, it's like a porter in the state. It's, it's an inmate that, you know, like mops the floors outside on the shoe or like does the sweeping or hands out the books on the book cart on Sundays or hands out the hygiene. Um, and in federal prison, no matter what, if you're an orderly in the hole, you're a check-in. They don't give it to people that are there for disciplinary or investigation. So you always know that the orderlies are have checked in, that they're not active or whatever. They, they're, they're labeled a piece of shit, which is, a, you know, another thing, you know, where prison politics are getting kind of contradictory is you'll see, I don't want to say who, but you'll see powerful people, high level gang members having the orderlies pass stuff or like, you know, like crazy, like kites, like with like hits on it. And the only way they can get it anywhere is to give it to the piece of shit and the piece of shit will, you know, goes and gives it to whoever. So it's just bizarre to me, you know, because according to their, you know, way their, their ideology, you don't even talk to them, you know? So I didn't really, I don't know. Anyway, so this orderly comes up to me and he's white and now everybody talks to the orderly because you have such little human contact even though the orderly's a check-in they usually have a lot of information about what's going on and i go up to the door you have to talk in like the side of the door it's like a little crack and you have to kind of like yell through it and then they yell to you it's the only way that you know you guys can communicate unless you do sign language so i'm talking to him and i'm like hey um did, did you do you know why we went on lockdown he's like he's like yeah um and this guy this guy i'd never seen him before it's just I'd only been at this compound a couple weeks you know i, I didn't know who this guy was it's some white guy had probably been back there eight months because he checked in on a debt or something and he said that <clears throat> you know hillbilly had gotten hit on the yard and supposedly he had been hit with a lock in the sock and that's why i mean his face i saw he had stitches right here and he had stitches right here like it, it, when i saw him and i was walking through you could tell something went down and the orderly is like you know he says that he got hit with a lock in the sock by black people by the blacks but there's a lot of people back here that are white saying he hit himself in the face with a rock and i was like what and they're like yeah he's like yeah yeah i'm like so he's checked in or he's under investigation he's like oh no no he's under investigation i was like i don't get it and then he left that's all i got out of him i was like what so I'm telling, you know, the Southsider about it because I, you know, the Southsider didn't, he, he just, he knew a little bit more or he knew a little less than the orderly just told me. He knew that we had been on a lockdown because some black dude had beat up a white guy. That's all he knew. So I I, was, I told him like, hey, um, the orderly just told me that, that Hillbilly got hit with a lock in the sock. Or he said what some people are saying is that he hit himself in the face with a rock. The Southsider's like, damn fool. Fucking PC moved on. I was like, I I was like, I saw him with my own eyes. I don't think he there's no way, dude. His whole face is stitched up. How can you hit yourself that hard with a rock? Where are where do these rocks on the yard exist? Where is there some dangerous rock on a prison yard? So I started like, he's like, I don't know, dog. A hey, fool. I'm confused right now, dog. I'm like, what? He's like, I'm confused, fool. 
I'm like, sexually? He's like, nah, hey, nah, dog, are you? No. He's like, oh, no, I'm confused. Like, like why I'm back here, dog? I don't know why they have me back here. I think that... I think that maybe I'm in trouble. I'm like, yeah, dude, if you're in the hole, you're in trouble. <laughs> you know? They're pr- he's like, what do you think they're going to give me? I'm like, hey, that's a good... Where's your lockup order? He's like, um... What do you mean, dog? Where's your lockup order? You have a piece... Here, here's mine. I'm under investigation. And, and on my paperwork, it says that... I'm under investigation because of uh, narcotic use suspicion. And that's why they locked me up. They locked me up because I was having an attitude with them. And it wasn't that bad. You know, I was not intentional by any means. Um, you know, I it's, and it's not because, you know, I, I thought about this a lot since I posted the last couple of videos. It's not because my reputation meant a lot to me. I said that. And I really, like, thought about it. No. It's because I'm a junkie and I didn't want to be in the whole cut off from drugs. That was like one of my bleeding reasons that I tried to stay out, you know? Um, and typically when in, when I'm under investigation, as petty as the one that I'm under, they're going to let me back on the yard. Because what happens is they the captain reviews everybody that's in the hole. They put people under the hole for stupid stuff. You know, they'll put you in there under investigation sometimes the cops just mad at you and just wants to teach you a lesson i mean they really abuse their discretionary power with putting you in solitary or in the holes it's not always solitary confinement yeah if they want to if they're really mad at you like they did to me at oxford they'll just give me 60 days of straight solitary where that's it like I could have a celly but they're like nope you're gonna be by yourself and like at first you're like cool and then you start going crazy you start losing your mind. So at this point, I still had a celly. So I had my lockup order, and he didn't have his. And I'm like, now I'm straight tripping, right? And I'm like, hey, um, next time a cop walks by, you got to tell him that you didn't get a lockup order and that you need it. And he looks spooked. And I'm like, oh, dude, what's going on? You know, I, all my wheels are spinning. He's like, um, 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 um all right, dog, uh, uh, all right. His eyes are all big. I'm like, look, I'm not tripping on you. I just want to see what it is, and I'll tell you how much trouble you're in. He's like, oh, okay. So next time the cop walks by, I'm like, get him. So he like goes up to the door. He's like, hey, um, hey, excuse me, Huda. Cop's like, hey, uh, my name's not Huda. It's C O Evans or whatever it was. He's like, oh, hey, so, uh, Spencer, hey, um, I didn't get no lockup order. He's like, all right, I'll uh, I'll, I'll print one out for you and I'll bring it. I'm like, okay, well, at least, you know, at least he didn't go up to me like, hey, I got a goal or whatever. You know, I, I was starting to think like, whoa, what if this dude's a check in? Because if he checked in and if I'm in a cell with him, no matter what I say, I checked in too. And from that moment on, my 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 reputation is destroyed. You know, it, it was a mix of not wanting to to completely destroy my reputation and not want to be cut off from drugs but i had just been back on a violation and like i wasn't planning on getting sober either i was like if anything i was more upset and i wanted to use drugs even more than before so i thought there was a good chance i I would be going back to prison so later that night the cop brings his paperwork and it is what he says he says that um you know, whatever his name was, inmate so-and-so on this time was stealing pizza from the kitchen and they are going to issue him a a 200 series shot, like stealing property or something. 200 series is not as serious as like 100. Like a dirty is 100, uh, murder is 100, uh, getting caught with a knife is 100. They take a dirty drug test very seriously in federal prison because drugs... Uh, create so many problems for them but so he's getting a 300 series shot i'm like hey look you're good like as soon as you see dho which is the discipline the discipline hearing officer they're gonna cut you loose you're not gonna stay in the hole for stealing pizza i promise you that he's like okay um but why are you in the hole then and like so now i'm starting to explain everything that's going on he's like damn dog hey when i get back to the yard i'll tell him that uh, you're no piece of shit fool and I was held up with you. 
And I'm like, yeah, probably, you probably shouldn't tell him that because, uh, you know, you might get beat up by your own people because I, I had a little issue. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, ooh, uh, I don't really want to go into it. He's like, oh, no, you got to tell me. I'm like, no. And I'm just sitting there like, God, this guy knows Spanish. I don't. What was I thinking? He might send a kite in Spanish to them. And now I've just like put attention on myself that I had an issue with Calm, who's Mexican. I don't even know if he's a Southside or whatever. So I don't know if you guys can relate with this, but boredom starts making you do weird, annoying stuff like you know, making weird sounds or like singing weird songs. Like it's almost like what children do, you know, when they come up with like weird little songs. Like, remember, fuck, fuck, fuck a duck, screw a kangaroo, finger banging orangutan at your local zoo. Remember that? Anyway, um, that's like stuff kids come up with because they're bored. And in the whole, you'll find that people do that too. They come up with little songs or little noises and it can be very annoying. I mean, it can drive you nuts. And the South Sider started doing that within like the third day. And he'd just be like sitting there. They give you these little pens. They're like this big and they're like wobbly. You know, they're the, there's the, these little wobbly pens for like, they're very hard. They're like golf pencil size, but they're in these little rubber things that like, you know, that will bend and everything so you usually have to make something out of paper or like a playing card so it's like a pen holder so it actually feels like a normal pen and he'd be like sitting there of course he raps he's like hey 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 fool i rhyme fool you want to hear some of my shit i'm like sure let's hear it horrible horrible you know it's like it's like yeah i'm drinking beer with my bitches I'm drinking beer with my hoes. Never know any neighborhood that don't know where I goes. That shit's hard on huh? female dog. I'm like bomb for sure. So he starts doing this thing that just annoys the shit out of me. His ego. Super duper duper serio. Super duper duper serio. And then what happens in the hole? is it becomes infectious, contagious. Other people start doing it. So like go to the door and go super duper duper serio. And then you'll hear it come down from the hall. Then you hear another sauce and they're all doing that. Super. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm with Southsider droids. It was like the fucking R2-D2 of Sereños. Duper duper. I'm like, dude, look, man, look, check it out. I Please stop doing that. But then you'd hear it come from down the hall. Super du-. I'm like, dude. And I don't have my radio yet. So I'm just like, ugh. A no book. Like, I think at some point someone shot us. I know at, at one point at Lompoc, we got one flew over the cuckoo's nest, uh, which was written by Ken Kesey. And it's one of my favorite books of all time. I don't know why, but that's one of the books that we came into possession at one point in the South Center. Like, hey, this shit's fucking boring, dog. I'm like, what? I love that book. And I read it over and over and over again. I know I don't know if we had it that particular day, but we got it shortly after that. And that just kind of became our thing. We started getting a routine. And this guy was OCD. You know, it's ridiculous. Like, you're in this very little space. Of course, I'm masturbating any chance I can. I, mean, I don't even care. I mean, they have a shower in there, but I'm still getting it on my bunk. I don't, whatever, you know, day or night. I'm just, you know. So, like, we'd wake up at like five in the morning. We wake up to the trays coming through the meal slots. Then we went back. We'd always go back to sleep until about nine or 10, you know, and they leave the lights on all day and all night. So generally you sleep with your shirt off and you just tie it around your, you just tie the shirt around your eyes, you know, which would suck because he'd super duper duper. I'd wake up to that and I'd be like, dude, Hey, Ten, ten to uh, what is ten to nine? <laughs> what, I forget some shit you say in jail, but uh, this guy would just do this constantly. So after we wake up around ten, I think they they serve um, lunch at like eleven thirty, and we would do burpees. He'd do his hundred and thirteen because thirteen is the is the M is the thirteenth letter in the alphabet for Mexican. But I'm white, so I do twenty three because it's the so I do one twenty three. So he'd like, and then if 
you know, like it, since I went past three, because, you know, you, you like go down and you go one, two, three. And like when you get up to he, they'd stop at 113 because they don't want to say 114 because 14 is Norteño. So like, you know, I'd be counting and I, you know, I'm doing Navy SEALs too. So it's like two push ups and I like lift this leg, lift this leg and then two more. You know, it's like I think five push ups every um, every time you go down. I'm doing 123 of those. Um, by this point, I've been working out and I'm relatively back in shape. By the time I get out of prison this time, um, I was in decent shape again. And uh, right when I get up to 114, he'll just be like, nada. Because like Norteño. I'm like, dude, can you not do that every time I get to 114? Every time. Nada. And then he, Dupert. I'm like, dude. It's just, it's driving me nuts. Do 123, and then he'd shower, and then I'd shower. We'd shower together. No, he'd shower, I'd shower. Um, and after I showered, he would get on the ground, and he'd have, like, this little ripped-up towel. It was probably about this big. And he would just scrub the cell from one side to the other. I'm going nuts in here. And finally, uh, DHO comes. And they don't let me, I don't go see DHO because I'm under investigation. Basically, I know what they're doing. They're putting me under, they listen to my phone calls and they listen to my, um, yeah, and they read my emails and they're going to say that that's grounds for keeping me under investigation until the test comes back because you hear me, like I said, I'm panicking. I'm like, I'm like calling my wife, babe, please. You don't understand. They're going to kill me. And she's like, you're such a drug addict. They're like putting this shit on, uh, you know, in the report. Uh, emails. Uh, uh, calls wife. Wife says he's a drug addict. Investigation. I'm like, gee, this chick is screwing me over still. Jesus Christ is never ending. And mail call is once a day. It's at, at, the, at Lompoc. They did it at night sometime between like six and nine it's horrible because that's the the highlight of the day they only do that monday through friday and like like my heart would start or you know it would start beating faster at like four o'clock i'd be like okay in a couple hours i might have a chance to get a letter you know and they'll, they'll just you'll just see it slide under your door if you have one and every night i wasn't getting one i was like and even if you know, even if she's writing to, like, it makes it to you. Even if the letter had gone to the unit, it'll go there. And I wrote her a letter. I wrote her a bunch right when I got there, you know, telling her that um, I was in the hole now and that I wanted to try to work stuff out. And every time that a letter didn't come, I was heartbroken. Not so much because I cared about her because I really didn't. And I'd already decided that I wanted to end it. It was like a mutual thing. She wanted to separate. And then I was like, you know what? If you're going to be out there having sex with other people, yeah, uh, and I'm in here doing burpees with super duper duper with killer. I'm cool, you know. Like y- y- you don't get to just go have sex with other people for free. We're in a monogamous relationship, you know. And ultimately, the reason that I wanted to end it too is because of the kid. You know, there was a kid involved, and I'd have momentary. Uh, I- I'd have momentary glimpses of clarity glimpses when i wasn't loaded but now i'm in the hole and i'm really like clarity's there and i have no idea i'm so you know insulated now i have no idea what's going back on the yard and i'm thinking that they're probably going to keep me under investigation and then until my drug test comes out then they're going to keep me in the hole for the dirty and it's going to make me look bad now i knew that my property had arrived in rd so what one of my plans was was that i was going to get with the property guy and have him release my property to to one person that I trusted, probably Jamie Lake. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, I had some friends there, probably my workout partner. And I was going to, you know, send him a kite ahead of time and and tell him where the stuff would have to go if it came down to it. And, um, you know, I'd written my parents a letter and told them that I was in the hole. And basically everything, I was just adapting to whole life Um, but then something happened that pretty much changed everything and um 
you know, I ended up getting a kite. So I'm probably in the hole now for like five days. And like, I'm used to it. I'm starving. I'm, my, whatever little chills I had for my petty morphine addiction had, had, you know, started to dissipate. And me and Killer are like, we're, we're good buddies. <laughs> you know, if there was like a slideshow of our time there, like have us like, he'd have his like arm around me and like, we'd be like holding up like different desserts that they gave us in the hole like all these great memories we made and it was horrible i hated it i literally hated it with him it's like the most annoying south sider ever and like i don't look some of my best friends are south siders but they're like the real deal ones they, they don't act like little kids and you know they're they're not idiots they're smart and they're nice people and they're they have families now and, and they do what they got to do to be a good parent and i grew up with them you know I grew up with a lot of Southside. I mean, Santa Barbara, we have Southsiders. Even though it's like a little tourist town, we do have some Southsiders. And um, they all live in like one section of town. And that's kind of the area where I went to high school. Um, so I'd play football with like all these kids. They weren't even Southsiders by then. They were just Mexican guys that I was in, that I played football with in high school. And they're like, you know. Uh, 10 years later I'd be like on some bus like shackled and handcuffed in jail and I'd see like four of them from the football team and they like are, they had like South Sider tattoos blasted on their head and I'm like oh <laughs> you tried weed too bro yeah no, I'm in prison no I'm just kidding but a lot of these guys did grow up to be South Sider so like I've been around it for a long time and then of course with all the time I've done um, you know I've become friends with a, a lot of them um and they they watch this stuff i think uh, you know at some point I'll, I'll have like a south side of reaction video just so you can see some of my friends watching like bro chop porn um skit reactions and stuff but um this particular guy just drove me nuts but the orderly after i'd been acclimated comes up to me and he slides a kite under the door now the kite is from the guy that had the keys to the yard. And it was like in a little scroll. I was like, yeah, I can only imagine what this is going to say. You know, they had gotten a kite um, to him. Now the kite comes through and then like a bag of coffee, about like a little ball of coffee comes through the door. So they were shooting me some coffee. Just like, you're not allowed to have coffee in the hole. So it's, oh, I'm going to have some coffee now just to celebrate my freedom. So it's always good, you know, like if, if someone's solid, you can bring, you know, if you have like, sometimes there's like a cool cop that works in the hole and like, you know, you see him walking through the compound and like someone will go up to him and be like, hey, um, can you bring this coffee in for Leone? Or sometimes they do it through the, um, through the plumber's. Because the plum the plumber crew will come in and like fix toilets and they like smuggle coffee into us or drugs whatever, and uh, so they gave me a little bag of coffee before I read the, the kite and I'm like okay, at least they're giving me coffee. So then I open it and it's from the guy that had the keys to the yard and he said, hey, Ryan, we know that you didn't check in. It's like the first line, and he's like, check it out. Um, we're gonna take care of weed on our end but there's something that we need you to take care of there. And he's kind of talking code, um, trying to think of like a way to say it so that uh, I don't disrupt their little codes. Uh, I don't want to do that. But he was saying it in a way where like only I would really, like if a cop read it, I don't think he would understand what I was saying, what, they, what he was saying. But he was telling me that they were going to take care of weed on their end, but that they needed me to sell up with Hillbilly and they wanted me to whack Hillbilly now. Now, Hillbilly is like literally 6'5", 250 pounds. And that's what they're... T and, they're uh, and they also said if I can do that for them, since I'm in the hole already, that they'll, they'll squash all of my debts. That I have to go in there and whack him. That's all they're saying. Nothing explicit. Not like, uh, we need you to stab him. We need you to strangle him. It's basically, I had to hit him. Now, I could interpret that any 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 way um you know that 
I don't know the way the way I saw it. I just basically had to pretty much make it so I get into his cell and then I just need to take off on it. Probably while he's sleeping. Probably on some super bitch time. Like, oh, dude, we're homies. Fist bump that. Yeah, woo. Dude, you want to you wanna play 20 questions? All right, I'm thinking of a pop star celebrity. And go. We're just like chilling and then like night comes and I just smother him with like a blanket. Oh, die. I didn't even know what he did. But they wanted me to take care of it. And, you know, in prison politics, sometimes some of that's just to save face. You know, I don't have to kill the person, but I need to fight them so that at least they can save face with other races, with the black, whoever he was in. I didn't even know what was going on. They, But they, they did say that they knew that I hadn't checked in, which was good. They were giving me coffee, which was good. They're saying they're going to squash my debts, which is good. What wasn't good is that they wanted me to take out someone that was literally about 250 pounds. He could beat me up with his big toe alone. And I was like, what? And like I'm saying, you're not untouchable being in the hole, especially if you haven't checked in. We will get into how this lovely saga comes to an end. In the next few videos, but I uh, will get into the next video soon. Um, I said I'd do two videos for my Patreon guys today, so I'm gonna get started on the second one. I appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't checked out Patreon, patreoncom slash Leone. I'll see you guys soon. Palabra. <laughs>